So my name is Trevor. Actually, I put it on the slide now so I don't forget to introduce myself. Who's new to uh, Sunnyside classes? Get a few? Nice. Welcome. We got a few new ones today. I see some, some grizzled veterans here too, we'll call them too. So thanks for coming. Um, I thought about changing the, the, the title of this class seriously to OCD Lawn Care because uh, I'm a little OCD with my turf, but uh, maybe that would scare a lot of people. I don't, I don't want to get that crazy. So we don't have to be as crazy as I am. Um, but I always kind of start with a couple disclaimers. So I'm an organic gardener. Yes, I have some chemical stuff up here I'll show you, um, but I'm an organic gardener. I'll show you some pictures of my grass on the slides here towards the end. And my lawn looks very nice and you can do it organically. You don't have to do it with chemicals, so it can be done. Um, I'm gonna let you choose which way you wanna go. Um, so I don't wanna offend everybody. It's just kind of a disclaimer I say at the beginning. I, I gravitate towards this and that. You've got options as a gardener, so you would want to choose depending on probably where you live, how close to the water you are, kids, pets, wildlife, all the rest of it. You can kind of make, make your own choices that way, okay? So well, I'm going to show you kind of a bunch here as we go through the, the sheet. Um, and the, the purpose of the sheet is it's numbered. So we start with one. I hate wasting people's time, and I think I figured this out over a lot of years working on my grass. If we follow the order, you're gonna spend less time. If you skip and go straight to the food, what's gonna happen? The moss is gonna look really green, the weeds are gonna grow like crazy, and you're still gonna to have to get rid of them. So so let's let's uh, let's start with one, and we'll kind of go right through the process here as we go. Um, and like I said, at the end, I'll show you some pictures. I finally remembered a couple years ago to start taking pictures of my lawn as I thatched and overseeded and top dressed and all the stuff we'll talk about, and you can kind of see what it looks like, because usually, Sometimes there's husbands and wives here and usually the husband's working on the lawn perhaps and she looks out and says What have you done? Our lawn looks like dirt. You killed the whole thing and it should probably look like dirt if you thatch You got a really good really good thing out of there. Okay So we always start with moss control that evil northwest creature that creeps everywhere beds lawns the whole landscape um, I would always treat for moss first especially coming out of winter I have not had to do it much in the fall anymore. If we do a good job in the spring, uh, we can kill the moss and kind of start over with grass. Um, especially if you've got shade and moisture, the moss is going to win. If you need to get rid of that moss here in spring, it's not gonna magically disappear in the summer. So get the moss treated first and rake it out. Whether we rake it or thatch it, which we'll talk about here, it needs to go away. We're not gonna spend the time to treat it, leave it locked, watch it turn black and let it sit there for the entire year. We want to get it out of there so that fresh grass can take hold and you've got your brand new lawn back. So two choices with Moss Killer. Uh, this is Moss Max, the heavy bag of iron. So have people used kind of an iron sulfate or ferrous iron sulfate before? You know, that's a great natural Moss Killer. It's not classified organic, but if I put iron down, that burns moss. Moss cannot, moss cannot absorb the amount of iron the grass can. I mean, that's a simple fact of nature. So I can use something like that in a spreader and broadcast that over a large area, let it sit for a few days. You'll see probably two, three days, like, oh wow, that is a lot of black in there. It'll turn black and then we can grab a lawn rake, fluff it out of there and we're good to go. Um, the other option is a potassium soap. This is what I use these days. It's a little bit more expensive. This would be natural organic. But potassium soap is a liquid. So for me, doing all this stuff all these years, I don't have to treat my whole lawn for moss anymore. It's very specific areas that are in shade and a little bit wetter. So I can just grab a bottle of that and spray those areas. It turns tan or kind of a straw color, but works just as well. But you know, I could buy a bag of this for you know, 15, 20 bucks here on special today and probably do my whole lawn, I would probably be spending like triple that to use the potassium. So I'm not trying to pawn that off on anybody. The big decision to me to make, because I learned this years ago from the wife, you stay in my patio, which is really my patio, but we won't tell her that. So if I use iron and I'm not careful where it goes and I have those pellets get on my sidewalk, my deck, my lawn, I'm going to have an orange stain for all eternity on there. So keep that in mind as you choose the iron products. We want to make sure that uh, we use that carefully and keep it away from the sidewalks, concrete, wood, all the rest of it. The potassium soap, I can spray that on my RV, I can spray it on my tree in the winter, I can put it anywhere and it's not going to stain anything. This is a product that a lot of people 
um, maybe newer to Washington, look at their apple tree or an old tree in their yard and see mosses and lichens and all that stuff growing on the trunks or the branches, right? This is the thing in the winter, I could take out there and actually spray it on my trunk and kill those mosses. They'll be right back again next winter, but you could do, that's just another option, but this won't hurt anything ever, okay? So two choices to me for moss killer. You can find some stuff at other stores. There's liquid iron, there's other ways to go too, but just keep in mind those two basic ingredients I'm either choosing to get a granular or liquid iron, or I'm going with the natural <coughs> potassium soap and not worrying about the staining, okay? So that's phase one. Phase two is the weeds. We'll do questions at the end. I should probably said that. We'll do all, you can ask all, I'm here all day. You can ask as long as you want after class. So weed control to me would be phase two. Like I mentioned, I know my neighbors, I've converted most of them in 20 years, but everybody goes straight for the bag of food in the spring. Um, so we, we want to attack weeds first. If I put an application of food down right now, the chickweed, the clovers, the dandelions, all that stuff's like, oh sweet, it's springtime, I'll soak up that food for you, and your grass is not going to get it all. So I would prefer we get weeds down. I think we're at the temperature now where you're going to be able to spray. You know, a month ago wouldn't done you a bit of good, but as we head into March here, or definitely over the next few weeks, it's plenty warm enough to get these things sprayed for. Now, we're gonna have a lot of herbicide uh, choices here, and this is where I kind of get in the soapbox. If I could ban one thing from this earth, it would be weed and feed. So I hope I'm not offending anybody. I'm telling you, try it a different way. Weed and feed is nothing but chemical. And that to me, you know, if I'm gonna choose to go the chemical route, which isn't the end of the world, if you do weed and feed, that's everywhere on your property, right? I just broadcast it over my whole lawn. If I buy the equivalent spray, I could walk out and spot spray what I need to spray and I'm not putting the chemical everywhere. To me, that's a little easier way on the environment if you're gonna go the chemical route. Um, so the options are, which I would never sell, I haven't sold weed and feed in 25 years now, going back to my other store that I ran, um, is, is go buy a cheap weed and feed if you wanna go that way from Scott's um, and start the year off. Keep in mind, it's gotta be much warmer for the herbicide to work in that. So if you're gonna put weed and feed down, you're probably waiting another month or six weeks or so, because uh, it needs to be up at 70 degrees for old 2,4-D uh, chemical to do its job. So these are the things that we carry here in front. Now option one, what I do is natural organic weed control. This takes care of everything in my yard except for clover. And well, uh, horsetail buttercup is a different discussion. We'll talk about that in a minute. But chickweed, dandelions, all the common stuff I get in my turf. This is this is weed. They call it Captain Jack's Lawn Weed Brew now. It used to be called Weed Beater FE because this contains iron. Again, I can spray this on this particular form of natural iron. The weeds cannot absorb that much iron. You see them fry in a day. The grass turns a dark black green grass can absorb a massive amount of iron if you came by my place here in a couple weeks and i looked last week so i'm not lying i counted seven weeds on an entire 10 or 2,000 square foot of turf in my front yard because i keep up on this season to season i don't get much anymore but when i go spray if i looked out my window i'm going to see dark black green polka dots wherever i spray don't freak out Two, three days go by, it dissipates in the soil, we're back to that same nice emerald green color. So if I'm gonna go natural, it's Lawn Weed Brew, Captain Jack's from Bonide. I think this is a great herbicide for most all lawn weeds um, that you can use. Being iron again, be careful not to spray it on the driveway. This isn't one to put in your driveway cracks or sidewalk or you're gonna get an orange stain from the iron. But in the, in the lawn, I think the best organic way to go. Now option two, is Weed Beater Ultra. So this would be like, you know, maybe you're a, you know, a, a Lowe's, Home Depot, all the other stores have a little garden department. Typically it's Ortho. So I think it's still called Weed Be Gone, if I'm not right. Mm -hmm. Anybody seen that? So again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's chemical like this, but it needs to be a little bit warmer when I use a product like that. This is a different formulation that works down to 45 degrees. So we carry Weed Beater Ultra from Bonide this would take care of all weeds, including clover, um, and I can use it in a cooler temperature. So again, if I mix this up and spot spray, I'm gonna have great death if I do go the chemical route and I'm not spraying my entire lawn, okay? 
if I move up to said gender, which this will probably be the last year for this on us, this was kind of a specialty lawn herbicide that took care of some grassy weeds as well. That's a little different when we talk herbicides, is how do we kill one grass and not kill another, if that makes sense. So sedgender was one that we took in some of the native grasses, maybe some buttercup, a couple of other things that were a little bit harder to take care of. The top of the, the, top of the totem pole, and it sounds funny, is going to be brush killer. Who's got brush killer? Because I do spray my blackberries with brush killer on the neighbor's banks so they stay out in my yard. So this sounds funny, like why would I ever put brush killer on my turf? I've told them to make the label bigger, but I can put, right, it says right on the front there, kills all lawn weed lawns without harming turf. So this is something, if you've got buttercup, horsetail, blackberry, some things that are really tough to kill, most of these herbicides are not going to touch those kinds of things. If I buy something like that, I've stepped my game up, maybe I can get it one time and then go back to my organic way of doing things. So I can actually spot spray with brush killer, not hurt my grass, but I can kill those really, really tough ones, okay? The last option is weed beater complete. And again, this is all chemical related, but this is the only thing you're gonna find that's both pre and post emergent. Does everybody kind of know when I say those two words? Okay, so I teach a herbicide class here in a few weeks, we'll go through all this. But let me just say this, if I have a growing weed plant, whatever it is, and it's actually already growing, I need a post emergent killer, okay? I gotta get something on that that will soak into the leaves, kill the root system. If I don't have any weeds, I've just cleaned a bed where I've done my lawn and I don't want weeds to come up again, we buy a pre-emergent. So that's something that would form a film on the soil and keep anything from growing through it. Does that make sense to everybody that, that way? So that's the key with herbicide is those two things plus in all the world there's really only two kinds of plants when it comes down to it. If I'm a monocot or a grass, I have one seed leaf. If I'm a dicot, which is 99.99% .99 of everything else, then I'm a different type of plant. And that's the problem with herbicides in a nutshell, is how can I kill one type of plant without hurting the lawn, okay? So that's what we're doing today, is getting selective weed killer that will take care of weeds and not hurt my grass. And we'll do this in the herbicide class for the whole yard, okay? So just keep in mind your options. Again, I have this, I don't even buy concentrate. We have a gallon of this in the store that comes with a little sprayer trigger on it. I have one of those in my garage. I've only got about 2,000 square feet of lawn, but it takes me about two years to kill that jug. I mean, I'm walking around spot spray, spot spray, spot spray, especially checking in spring. Nothing goes to seed and I'm good to go for the year. I hardly have anything ever come up during the rest of the season that way. So if we can really focus on this early, you're gonna get those lawns out of there before they have a chance, to, or the weeds out before they have a chance to go to seed, okay? So if I've killed moss, my weeds have shriveled and disappeared, now I'm back to probably some black debris from my moss or tan, old grass with, with showing no weeds. And now I gotta make a choice about thatching. Is anyone thatched in here? Got a few. If you haven't, I think that's the single best thing you can do to your grass, especially coming out of winter. You can eliminate all the raking and this and that. If I just do one big power thatch, I can get everything done at once. It's all light and fluffy. Rake it up, put it in the yard waste, and throw it away. I'll show you some pictures here at the end of what it looks like after you've thatched, because it destroys the grass. You're down to dirt with very little green, and you probably think I've killed my lawn and it comes right back and looks like you just planted brand new turf. So we get rid of dead grass, we get rid of all the debris, the moss, all of it in one fell swoop. You can hire a company to certainly come and do it for you. I don't think that's maybe the cheapest way to go. The rental shops, it's like the size of a lawnmower, a little heavier. You can get a power thatcher and probably do your, my, it takes me an hour to do mine. I run up to Pilchuck, grab one, <clears throat> Go home, takes me about an hour, go drop it off, wash it off, drop it off, and I'm done. Then I can have the fun part, do the raking and all the rest of it. So very easy to do. If you haven't done it, I would look at your turf and go, okay, is it for needing food? Or do, can I see all that dead thatch and debris and all the rest of it? <coughs> Getting it thatched would get rid of all that mess and cut down a lot of other problems too as we go through the season, okay? 
aerating is the second half of that and I, I have never had to aerate my grass I know some that do I'm a golfer so obviously we see that at the golf course twice a year I want maximum drainage they put sand in I would not do sand do compost if you're doing this at home we want to build soil structure um, aerating to me the, the decision would be think back to last summer did you water your grass did you want it to stay green and did it turn brown anyway maybe you've got a slope maybe it's really hard in certain areas if we have compacted root system you tried to irrigate it in the summer and the water just runs off okay maybe it's time to plug those areas or plug the lawn get some compost in there because that means fresh root system I've got better drainage I'm gonna get rid of some of that root debris does that kind of making sense if you thatch, don't leave your plugs. That's the thing that kills me. If you're going to take the time to thatch it, rake the plugs out of there. You don't want ankle breakers. You're going to end up with those little little plugs all over the place, and you're going to have ridges and dips and that all over the turf. So if you do uh, decide to aerate, clean it up when you're done. You could thatch, you could aerate, clean it all up at once, and then you're going to bring in some compost or maybe a three-way bland compost sand topsoil and cover the whole lawn so that it fills those holes back up and now we're back to square one again okay so again both those might not be for everybody i would really try to recommend if you haven't and your lawn's been struggling especially with a lot of brown look at thatching that's the one thing i think everybody did once a year you'd have brand new turf season to season okay so i've got moss out i've got weeds done i've thatched i have a mess i've raked it up now I've got dirt, a little bit of grass, and I'm ready to start over again. We kind of get into that phase four. So top dressing to me is, we talked aerating a minute ago. Okay, I have to fill plugs. That's separate. I need more soil for that. But if I'm going to overseed my grass, or I have a dead patch, or the dog has ruined a couple areas, and i got to start over, I need to get seed down, food down, and i got to cover it with something. That's the other common thing. I see with folks is they take the time to feed it, do all this, and then they put the seed on the surface and walk away. The birds are going to take most of it from you. Three straight dry days in the spring. I hope we get three straight dry days one of these days. <laughs> if I have that happen, that seed dries out, then you got to start over again because we can't let that seed dry out. So top dressing with a little covering of compost. You'll see in my pictures. If you looked at a top dress lawn, it, it, mine doesn't even look like lawn. It looks like a brand new bed, like dark black wet compost. I can see when it's lighter brown. Okay, it's a little dry. Let me wet it down lightly to keep that seed happy. Um, and typically this time of year, we don't have to worry about that, I hate to say. So as long as we keep it a little bit wet, that grass seed will germinate very quickly and then off we go with, with brand new grass. So if, if you keep those kind of bullet points in mind, I'm not burying my lawn like that or you're going to start over again. We're talking about an eighth of an inch, a quarter inch or so is all you need to top dress. If I'm buying seed, you know, we only carry one grass seed mixture. We make our own because I can't find it anymore packaged. It's the Seattle Shade and Sun. So what does that tell you? Locally here, does great in our climate and it attacks both fescue ryegrass for sun or shade. So I've got a nice blend in there that I can tell you it's all I've ever used for 25 plus years. It's gonna match what you already have, okay? It'll, make, it'll mix in nicely with what you already have. So we get grass seed. If I'm overseeding, I just need about two, three pounds per thousand square feet. You don't need to spend a lot of money on grass seed. If I have nothing but dirt and I'm starting from scratch, we probably double that. We need more like five or six pounds per thousand square feet or you have somebody come hydro seed it um, I'm a not a sod fan so I'd probably try to talk you out of that although you get instant lawn if you pay the money for sod but I could buy seed and do my lawn you know probably for 50 bucks of seed if I did the same amount of sod I'd probably spend about five grand you know that, that's just the simple truth sod's gonna cost a lot more for installation labor and it's gonna, gonna, you know, it's gonna look like grass right away but it's going to take you a little, a little more money and you're stuck with that fiberglass netting that's underneath the sod for all eternity. If you ever want to go back and dig a hole, good luck because I tried to help my buddy with that this winter. What about the hydro? Uh, the hydro seed is not a bad thing. Again, if, if I was expensive. hired, I've never hired a hydro seed and my folks did and it worked out great. But I would be asking, okay, I'm going to get you a hydro seed. It's a lot less than doing sod. 
but timing is key there's washed out like twice i think they had to do it three times to get it to take and b whatever company it is what is your c that would be the question i'm asking i want to make sure something for the northwest that can take wetter winters drier summers the other you know? thing you got to be careful is you got to make sure they clean their tank clean their tank that's another great point yeah, we'll talk a lot lawnmower cleaning here in a minute too so we've got our seed down you'll see the two options there and i brought a bag up of both so compost or we get a really we get a we get a screened compost called top coats you even got the fancy guy driving his lawnmower on the bag now those are identical products they're 100 percent organic compost the only difference is that top coat is really finely screened I've used both as a top cover. I don't really care which one you pick. They're both excellent. If you're gonna try to run it through some sort of spreader, if you have one of those old peat moss type spreaders, then I would get the top coat. The, the compost will be a little bit woody and you're gonna have a little debris in there. You'll have to stop every once in a while and clean it out. But either one I buy, we have both of those in a cubic foot and a half bag. This will cover about 200 square feet. You don't need as much soil as you think you do if you've got a typical city-sized lawn. If I buy the bales, which is what I do, five bales does 2,000 square feet like clockwork at my house twice a year, and that's all I ever have to grab. Now, I've got half an acre. Sure, we'd like to sell you $300 worth of compost, but you probably would be better off calling a bulk soil place and having them deliver two yards, three yards, four yards of a good screen compost you can do exactly the same thing with okay but the point is we want that top dressing on there nice and thin i don't see the seed anymore and it locks all this stuff right onto the surface and then off we go it's going to keep well, it wet how do you for spit you. it out if you already put the seed down so i'll tell you what i do now again i've seen whirly gigs you can spread seed like this every time i do that i find grass growing in my roadie and off the bed and all over the place i'm hand sprinkle everything and it sounds like it takes you weeks to do it doesn't take very long so I got a bucket with seed in it. I walk out, I don't even wear gloves with seed because then I can feel it and the fingers feels good. And I'll start the back corner and just lightly sprinkle. I can see where I have some grass, you get a little less. Maybe I had to dig up a patch and I have nothing, I can put more down and I can really focus on filling that whole area up. Um, then it's the same thing. If I'm doing this all at once, I'm seed, I'm organic lawn food, I'm lime, all down on the surface together and then i'm covering that whole mixture that with my hand. top dress and all of it by hand the, sometimes with the food and the lime i'll use my <laughs> spreader but again it, I, I don't mind walking around i can bond and talk to the grass a little bit as i'm going right so we can toss it out and again focus on areas that might need a little bit more a little bit less but those the bag products are really easy just to run your spreader that might save you a little bit of time but I would hand sprinkle the seed. That way you can kind of focus where you need to get a little bit more on there, okay? <clears throat> so you'll see, kind of tying in, the fifth and the sixth, or the, just what I mentioned, my fertilizer and my lime. Is it the end of the world if you put seed down, top dress it, and then put those two on top? No, it's not gonna matter, is it really? But I would rather have you lock all of that onto the soil surface and let mother nature's rain keep washing that into the soil and re-energize the whole turf area. So try to do all those things and then top dress right over the top of it and you'll be in business now we only sell organic lawn food here you know that's i think it's the superior lawn food um you know there's lots of other brands out there scott seems to be the choice because it's sold so cheap a lot of times in big bags again you know try do what you want to do with your lawn um you know the the synthetic food it's not going to hurt anything the weed feeds will but the, the regular lawn foods won't hurt anything the problem is they're so super water soluble so i've just found you know years ago i striped my yard and i tried every lawn food little rose and what did what and what was better color and how long did it last you know being science guy we tried all that um and it's just one of those things i found with the synthetic food it's like crack my grass grows like a weed turns deep dark green grows too tall i gotta mow it three times in two weeks and then it crashes okay now i gotta put another bag down and it just never ended that cycle through the growing season I think you'll find with organic, you'll see pictures of my lawn fed three times a year at the most. And a lot of times with me, it's only two. Um, yes, it's more expensive than buying scats. There's no question about it. But I think if you pencil out the math and it's like, well, I can buy six bags of that or three of this, you're gonna end up spending the same amount of money and you're gonna be happier with the results. I like mowing my lawn. I got an old little Rio mower and I like my cross cut, my little OCD patterns. 
and I, 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 I love mowing it, but do I want to go out and do it twice a week? No, I like doing it once a week or once every two weeks is plenty. The organic's gonna give me that nice emerald green color that's consistent and doesn't crash, and I never have to go out there and mow more, more than that. Okay? Yeah, but in the summertime, you can't water as much because it gets so darn expensive. Yeah. Well, I, that's a different discussion. We'll talk about water here in a minute. Yeah, because water, water is a little different discussion. Okay, so everybody good with food? We carry, I think this is the superior lawn food brand on the market. We, I've sold this for about 30 years now. That's it. Got a new package. It looks a little different from E.B. Stone. It's the same great food. They used to call it Nature's Green. It was a little different looking label. Now they put the fancy little kid and the dog on there and made you feel all friendly because you know you're doing the right thing. So, um, so the organic lawn food. I certainly also don't have any issue with the Spoma. We carry a few uh, Spoma brand products. That's a great East Coast family company uh, that does organics. E.B. Stone's West Coast, we do a little bit of both. Um, but a Spoma maybe is a little bigger bag for a little bigger area if you've got more square footage to cover. But either one of those are the, are the, are the solution to a, a healthy lawn to me. The biggest thing with organic lawn food is humic acid. If I have an organic product of any kind, I've got all those trace elements, I've got the, the less water soluble nitrogen, it's not going to flush through with the rain. And humic acid is what turns all this into usable nutrients for our turf. So that comes with humic acid um, is an ingredient of all the organic lawn foods. You're going to see it work much better and help the soil chemistry is the big part of that too. Okay. Lime is the sixth one there. And I'll just say this because I want to make sure we're clear. <coughs> Lime is not a moss killer. And I have some people every year, I think, that walk out of this class and think, oh, let's well, put lime down. That'll fix everything. It is not a moss killer at all. In Washington, we have super acidic soil in, our, in Western Washington. Roadies thrive here, evergreens everywhere. It's not a bad thing, but long story short, moss loves acidic soil, grass does not. Grass will grow in it, but it likes alkaline soil a little better. So I'll tell you, for me, I messed with moss killer and never used lime for a lot of years, probably till 15 years ago. And I had moss everywhere, every single winter coming out of the winter. It's like, oh great, time to treat and rake moss again for about a week, you know, kind of thing. Now with lime in there, I hardly have any moss at all. It's only in the places where it should be, the wet, shady corners that probably I should fix the soil in anyway, edge of the beds and kind of thing. So if, if we use lime, you're essentially just gradually bringing the pH up of that turf area without messing with your garden beds. The moss is not going to grow as well and, and the grass is going to thrive. You're kind of making a better, a better condition for them. So I think lime is a, a cheap thing to put down. I do spring and fall at my house every year. Even if, even if you did it once a year, it's a great way to go. We only carry one anymore. It's heavy, 30 pounds lightning lime from Espoma Organics. I think their formula is the best one that I've tried or, or, or researched. It's the only package I've seen with with on a lime that will actually tell you what it does if you go look at a bag of lime super sweet soil sweet there's all kinds of brands out there and you're like well how much do i put down and what does it really do this one has a chart in the back if you put down this many pounds per thousand square feet you're going to raise your ph half a point a point whatever it is you could almost take a, a ph reading of your turf here and there get a number and then go correct it with the right amount of lime. You're not gonna hurt anything with the lime kind of thing. Lime is always, to me, spring for sure. The vegetable garden, absolutely, which is a different class, and then do the turf area. Those are the two things that we tend to do in our yards that like a sweeter alkaline soil. Okay. Can you recommend a pH uh, instrument? Yeah, do a little, get a little pH meter. We got digital ones in there. We even got the old shake it in the bottle little chemistry kits if you wanna do it the hard way. But you, if you get a reading in there, that will tell you, oh, I'm not so bad. I'm kind of neutral. It's okay. Typically, soil up here is more in the five and a half to six range. I'd like to get it up there in the seven to eight range in our turf areas. That, that would mean the grass grow a little better. Okay? So not a moss killer, but a soil changer. You know, that's going to help you down the road. If you do this once and walk away, it's going to do you nothing. If you get in the habit of... You know what, I could do that once every spring, throw it through my spreader and get it on the turf, then you're going to end up winning. You're going to see a huge reduction in the amount of moss you got. Yes? Is it helpful to do it a third time in the year, like 
I, I would, I would, she asked if it would be better to do it more than twice a year is plenty. And again, I, we don't want to, if you did it in the summer, it's not going to hurt anything, but now I got to run my sprinkler and really soak it into the soil. I'd rather have you let Mother Nature do it every March, April, and September, October. Pick one of those two or do both those times. Okay. So if we flip that page over and we go to number seven, so that's some turf diseases. <coughs> Does anyone know? like red thread, pink thread, dollar spot. Everybody's probably seen it in their yawn. Yeah. My lawn's got a little bit of it right now. I live with it, it is what it is. Once we feed in the spring, the grass goes green, tends to grow right through it, we're fine. If it gets bad, you will kill brown areas of the turf that we're gonna have to go back and overseed, scratch off the debris and thatch and all the rest. The, the reason I put it after this is because I think these Last three things here are things just to consider on top of lawn health. So if I'm worried about disease or I have it, um, A, the thatching is gonna get rid of the problem. If I have dead thatch, that is where all this stuff's gonna fester. You know, not up here on the blades, but down here at the soil level. If I got old mowing clippings and debris built up and all that stuff, that sits and just soaks all through the winter, that's where a disease has a chance to get a foothold and get up onto your green blades. Is that kind of making sense? So if I get that thatch out of there, I've probably eliminated my problem. I've never had to spray or do any treatment for turf disease. I live with it a little bit late winter if I get it, but as soon as I thatch and feed, I'm done. You know, sweet, I might see you next winter again. I don't care, but we got nice green, green grass through the growing seasons in the middle, okay? So that's the option for disease. Now, if I was gonna treat it, or maybe I didn't know I had it and it's gotten pretty bad and I do have dead areas, um, I've gotta make a choice on what to use again. Systemic chemical solution is you buy, the easy way is you buy a bag of infused, you put this in your spreader, and I broadcast this over my lawn area, that soaks down with rain, gets down to the thatch layer, and it kills all the fungus spore. So you'll probably win with that. If you're gonna go natural, when do you apply that? That's a that's a spring thing right now. You know, again, if you're gonna thatch and all that, you probably are taking care of your problem. If you're not gonna thatch and you're like, yeah, but I see some red thread here and there, you can find pictures of a lot of that online. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just want to treat it and say, okay, let's get that treated, get it fed, and we'll grow right through it. This would be the natural one. This is called revitalized. It sounds like nuclear death. They call this a biofungicide, which I think sounds mm -hmm. even worse than regular chemicals, but this is organic. So this is essentially, if I open this up, I think, ooh, that smells like my grandma's molasses cookies. So it's literally sugar in a bottle growing a bacillus bacteria solution that eats fungus. I put this on rose, my vegetable garden, I use this a lot in my yard. I could put this on my turf as well as a suppressant to some of those thatch diseases. If I see those spores and I spray this on there, think fungus eating bacteria. This will solve my problem and not hurt anything else. But this is one of those things on the front, you'll see fruit, piece of fruit, a rose leaf, a vegetable garden, all the above. This would be your natural fungicide to use on a lot of those areas. Or copper, typically in a, in a garden or like a golf course, you know, for me, I don't use the copper on my turf at my yard, but I'll see that as the common fungicide. Much safer than a systemic or using a harsher chemical as long as I don't live by water, copper and water do not get along, the river, the lake, the sound, the stream, that kind of thing. But if I'm locked in the town, that's not gonna hurt anything else. I put copper on, I let it dry, and I'll, you will kill the, the fungus with that as well, okay? Do you like the other one better? Uh, Revitalize works great. I mean, it works on a lot of things great, but this is kind of the, the, the decision is, do I take the quick, easy route, maybe do this one time and be done with it, or am I up for, getting it once now, maybe getting it one more time in a couple weeks to make sure I'm good to go, and then I'm okay. So maybe a little bit more time, um, and but not, not any, really any more cost or anything, just a little more time to do it that way. So the next is the other one's crane fly larva, and this is one, anyone got crane fly? You've probably seen them. Uh, crane fly is an evil little creature. You'll see the mama kind of skimming across the turf, looks like a daddy long legs meets a mosquito on steroids. They just kind of go along the surface there she's just laying eggs everywhere those develop into larvae and that just eats turf root system so I can't tell you if you have crane fly please don't come after class and tell me I got brown lawn do I have crane fly because I can't tell you unless we see the soil I would tell you go home get a square shovel 
dig up a little square of turf, carefully lay it on its side, take your gloves on and look in there. You'll find the grubs. You can see on the bag right there. There's your, there's your crane fly larva. Beigey, gray. You'll find them in there if you got them. And then you can choose, okay, the war is on. Maybe he doesn't, you know, I don't have that many. We can let him slide. But um, sometimes crane fly will get a pretty good piece of turf. So we have to make a choice which way to go. Now, I wish I've been trying a few things. I luckily have knock on wood behind me. I haven't had crane fly too bad. I found a few in the fall when I usually look. Um, and they've not done any kind of permanent damage to my place. Um, I love my grass, and if they got in there and did some damage, the war would be on, and I'd have to make a choice. I've been looking online. I see all kinds of people trying this and spray soap on it, do this, and you'll get them out of there. You're more than welcome to try any of that. I'll, I'll probably end up trying a few of them if I get them. The two choices to me for something you would buy is this, is insect grub killer. So this is a chemical, it goes into the soil, and you would kill the larva. This is usually the easy way to go that most folks go with. I don't mind this one as much as using chemical on the surface because this is the opposite of almost anything else we've talked about. I want dry weather to spray weeds. I have to let it sit on there, dry on there, do its job. In the meantime, I don't want me, the dog, the animal, whatever it is out there walking on it. I don't want it on their feet. I don't want it in the house. If you see where I'm going, something like this, I would probably wake up in the morning and say, sweet, it's going to downpour this afternoon. Go put that on my grass. Let mother nature wash it into the soil and then it's gone. It's down there in the dirt doing what it's supposed to do, killing the larva. Okay. So this is more systemic. If you're going to go with maybe the little bit safer option, this is a product called 8. It has to have the granular, not the liquid 8. It's a little different. But this is probably the safer option for a chemical. It's non-systemic. And for this has got bifenthrin and a little bit different product than the insect grub control. This will do the same thing. I'll soak into my turf and nuke out all the bad larvae. This is what we really recommend if you ever fight root weevil on rhododendrons. This is the one thing that you can spread out underneath your rhododendrons, let the water wash it in again, and we'll kill the larva in there, because otherwise you're never going to get Mr. Root Weevil either. But eight is very cheap. I think it's not even like 20 bucks for a bag, and this will do like thousands of square feet. I don't even think you'd need to use that much um, to, do, to do a typical city yard, okay? So if you do put it on a, and you have dogs, yeah. they go out. And Same thing. If I put either one of these granular applications on, I want it to rain or let's say I forgot to do it and it's June and it's not raining, I'm gonna soak the daylights out of the lawn one day and get all that washed into the soil and it's not gonna get on my dog feet, kids feet, pets so, feet. So you got a system that you run it for 20 minutes? And you think exactly, just get it up. You'll see it a, a dusty. It'll wash down the soil very, very quickly. Yeah. So crane fly, the last one there is Mr. Mole. Now who's, who's battling Mr. Mole? Everybody raises their hands. Mr. Mole. Uh, this is always one that makes me laugh because you could probably get like 10 of me up here and every one of us will tell you something different. Like, oh man, that worked the best for me ever. Next person is like, are you kidding me? They dug the hole up right where I put that down. That did nothing for me. So mole is a tough one. Um, it always makes me smile because it's actually illegal to trap a mole in the state of Washington, which sounds funny to me. I don't think the sheriff's ever gonna come to your house and give you a, a ticket for killing a mole. But it always makes me laugh. We're allowed to sell you a moss killer or a mole killer or a trap or anything else, but you're not supposed to use it. So you can figure that out. But you know, mole's a tough one. I'd probably go back to my college days, you know, and think science for a minute. Why is he there? The reason he's there is because you got something to eat that he likes in your soil. So sometimes applying a grub killer of some kind eliminates his food. He goes to the neighbor's house and eats away at his for a while and you don't see him anymore as you smile and wave from next door. So we could try eliminating the food, that might be phase one to me. Phase two is repellent. So we always have sold, I've had this for a long time, but this is castor oil. This is not what you're gonna buy in the store. We don't put liquid castor oil on our lawn. This is encapsulated in like a little tiny bit of clay so that it lasts. So Molmax has worked really well for a lot of people. This is one that I would broadcast 
out on my turf area and it acts as a repellent. They try to move away and move away. The mistake is most people I talk to try to catch them. Okay, you're buying Molmax, don't cover your whole lawn. Because what you want to do is find where the tunnels are. Where are they active right now? Do one third. Walk away for a week. Then come out and go another third. Then walk away another week. Now we go to the edge of the property and hopefully they're at Mrs. Jones's next door kind of thing. <laughs> if you cover your entire turf area and I'm a little hole, what am I going to do? I'm going to go nowhere because every direction I go, I have the same issue. So try to do it in chunks and not cover your whole lawn. I'll tell you that right in the package. Speaking as a guy, read the package. It'll tell you to use it the right way, right? You're just setting that on the surface? Or setting that right on the surface because again, this is another one, granular stuff. I don't mind, I want rain. I want to do this so that it soaks into the soil structure. That mole smells that castor oil and says, ooh, I don't want to be here anymore. Let me head next door kind of thing, okay? What about dogs? <clears throat> well, same thing. Don't the, the castor oil is not going to hurt your dog. And again, that's organic. There's no chemical in that at all. But again, we, we put it out, we let it rain, or we wash it in real quick. Then have at it. Dogs can run out there and do do what they got to do. Okay. The last one here is the sonic spike. Now maybe we've had success in either getting them out, heading to the neighbors, wherever it is. And now you're like, sweet, I just want to wave and watch them dig holes in your yard and not come back across my property line. This is one again, I've heard a lot of people that love these. I've heard other people say I'd waste biggest waste of money I've ever had. But it's worth a try. So this is a sonic spike. I don't buy the solar ones anymore because what's the problem up here with the solar? Probably not gonna last much of the year. So we get battery, uh, battery powered spikes. So this is one after I don't have moles, or maybe you don't, but you can see him at the neighbors. You might want to get a couple of these on the property line. This is just like a chatter sound. <coughs> so when I have this plugged in, it vibrates in the soil the most tend not to like it, and they just stay the opposite direction. So if I have gotten rid of them or kept them out, maybe this is a way. These cover a massive amount, like 7,500 square feet. You don't need like 50 of them. You need like a couple along the property line, I think, to keep them from coming back in. Now, does all these mean instant gratification probably no because i think again I, i've talked to so many people in one day someone will come down dude i went to your class last year that sonic spike is the best thing i've ever tried i can't believe i've never seen a mole now in two years the next person will butt in and say yeah right i put one of those to the ground the next day i came out and that's where his mole hill was <laughs> so so i you know depending on how mutant your mole is that's going to be the hard part but I would try that kind of thought process. Like, okay, let me see if he's got some food I gotta get out of here. Maybe I try a repellent. Maybe I try a spike. Then maybe war is on. And we start putting on the gloves and the fingers and we say, okay, you're gonna get trapped, gassed, wormed, whatever it is. And that war is on. Because there's a lot of other things out there. We don't carry them here, but you can find gels and all kinds of funky stuff. We we're talking before a class and I can remember my pops back on the farm days in the 70s plugging the exhaust pipe in the mole holes, pouring some gasoline in there and lighting it on fire, thinking that would solve the problem. And we just don't hopefully do those things. I know he doesn't anymore because I told him no more. But uh, but it probably probably would work a little bit, but I don't think they're helping much either. So, so we got all those steps down. Now, you'll see here just a couple of tips at the end. You know, again, me on the soapbox just kind of probably preaching a little bit to try to talk you into getting some organic stuff and doing things the natural way. Um, the one thing on there, starting new, you know, if you want to talk about new construction, you can come up after class, we can talk about it. But I would say this, with all gardening topics I talk about, it comes down to the health of the soil. So if I have crappy soil, I'm going to have crappy lawn. If I bought a house, in the development over here because every single one of them came over here within a year and said dude my whole yard's dying and i'm a contractor i'm turning your your yard into a piece of concrete hard pan then i'm bringing in two inches or an inch of good dirt and planting your goodies and it looks great when you buy it and one year later like the lawn sucks everything's dying i got water everywhere that's a soil issue not a lawn issue it doesn't mean you can't grow grass it means you got crummy soil if I'm going to start over again, which I did, I bought an old 50s house in Everett and someone had not done much for a few years. The, the folks, the only other people that owned it had passed away and were, were getting up there in age. And I tried all this. Every, I knew how to take care of grass. I'm like, God, I just can't get it to do right. 
till finally one August, I was like, you know what? We're starting over, honey. I'm sorry. Got the rotor tiller out, got racks out. I spent like 10 straight weekends redoing my grass and I have done no work on it since, about 15 years later. So if we fix the soil, I don't need three feet. I need like six, eight inches of really good, well-drained organic soil and I'm gonna have great lawn. If I've got two, it's gonna catch up with you down the road. Um, you know, I don't know if it's telling you to start over again. I'd hate to tell you to get a road tiller and rip the whole thing apart and do it from scratch, but you would know better than me what the condition of your soil they is. They say you do it from scratch, and you, you got to add something into it. Exactly. Then you're talking about removing the turf layer, getting the grass out of there. Thatch takes forever to biodegrade. So if I'm really going to start over again, raise the level, do whatever, I got to get a sod cutter or rototiller and pitch all those pieces of sod into the yard waste. Do you rock it? We don't need every grain of sand out of there, but the bigger rocks go away. Then I can bring in some soil to build my structure up, roll it, level it, get all that ready to go, which is exactly what I did. You're gonna have great grass. I mean, it's, it's not a lot of money, but that's a time project. Or again, you hire a company to do it for you, you're gonna spend a little money again. But if you pick away at it, if, I would just say this, if you are literally at the point where you're like, I'm done, I'm starting over again, I hear exactly what he said, and that's exactly what my soil is. To me, it's now, or you do what I did and say, okay, I'm gonna live with it for spring to midsummer, and I can do all the prep work in August. So when I do this class again, I do the same class in September for kind of winter, fall, winter lawn care. That's the perfect time to go seed, lime, all the same things, and have plenty of rain to keep it wet. Nothing's worse to me than trying to do this in July. Unless you've got a sprinkler system, you're gonna be glued to your water for two, three straight months because I can't start fresh grass seed. It's gonna have no drought tolerance at all that I'm gonna to have to really watch the water on it. So that's why we try to do this March, April, or September, October. Let mother nature water it for you and keep it happy, okay? So let me show you is my screen still on there? So I'm just going to show you a couple pictures so you can kind of see some things we've been talking about. <clears throat> so again, there's our moss product choice for killing the first step. I've got some things to choose for weeds here. You can see a couple different phases. Or again, the natural one, there's the jug I have in my garage, that Weed Beater FE. Now they've rebranded. If you see anything in the store, A, that has a brown cap or it has that brown label section on it that that designates natural organic stuff no chemical in it um the, that one's purple but they changed their coating to make it easier yeah, for everybody cap, it'll be this brown now oh. and so the point is it's I'm also kidding. called captain jack's lawn weed brew that that's their little organic guy the gardener he's on all their bottles now so captain jack's everything in the store from bonide there's your lime and the Espoma lawn food, and then you've got your EB Stone Organic, so that's, I think, the superior blend still to this day. You've got your two top dress products there, your compost, and again, bags or bales on compost. If you want to save some money, the bales are way less than twice as much as the bags, and that's three cubic feet compressed into a bale, so that's what I buy. We have an everyday special on that, always that buy four, get one free, which saves a little money too. We've got our turf disease, our, our options, infuse again, or copper liquid would be our, our, our spray or chemical choice, or we go with revitalize if we're gonna go natural. Then our insect grub, those were our two choices there. I'll report back again in the fall, because if I got crane fly, I'm gonna try some organic things and we'll see how they do. Then we got our friend, Mr. Mole. Okay, we're gonna try to let him keep eating. We're gonna repel him. Are we going to go to battle here with some gassers and traps and a pitchfork and all the rest of it? You can get them all with a lot of different things. <laughs> so, here's a couple of my pictures when I did this last year that I finally remember to take and save. So, you can look at that lawn there. That's one of my back lawns in the back by the butterfly garden. That doesn't look like grass, does it? That looks like a mound of brown dead debris. That is after I power thatch. That's what yours should look like. And that's after I raked it on the right there. You can see it's all cleaned up. I can see a little green there. You know, before I start this, I don't want grass like this. I'm mowing really tight. I'm putting my mower on the lowest setting 
and I'm scalping it right down above the soil level, then I thatch. That way I get rid of, let it kind of really start over again. So you can see thatching is destruction. Please don't run out and kill your partner if you look out the window and you're like, what have you done to my grass? Because it should look brown. It should look dirty. It shouldn't be much green left. We rake all that mess up. Don't leave it on the surface. And then there's the same garden area after I top dress. So yes, I can see a little green there, right? But I see compost. I see dark black wet compost is the majority of that. And you can see right after I did it, after one week, there's a month. And it looks like I got brand new lawn. You know, am I, you know, before I had my, there's my younger son there, my Mr. Max is eight now. But before I had kids, I was the one who got out of the truck every day coming home from the nursery and walking around and plucking a piece of poa anna out of my grass and all the weeds and everything. Cause I didn't want nothing but pure rye grass. When I had children, I discovered there's more important things in the world than OCDing on your grass on a daily basis. So I live with a little bit of poa, some other grassy type weeds. I mow pretty tight, so I can't really tell. Yes, you can look at that picture and probably see a little bit of different shades of green in there, but it's really nice looking lawn without going the chemical route or again, getting the knife out and cutting these little patches of grasses out and then reseeding it and all that. When the kids are out of the house, I'll probably do it again, but we'll wait, we'll wait till that point. Yeah. So you can see that, and again, all the way through fall. I mean, that's the same area from a different angle. Max and I were out cleaning up leaves, and of course he's messing up my piles uh, from the maple. But you can see how green it is still. That is one dose of fertilizer in the spring. Sometimes I skip the summer. This year I did it in ju early July and then one dose in the fall going into winter and that's it i mean that's not every month every week never had to mow too much that's really easy now i did a science experiment because i wanted to show you this here and i hope it shows up okay this last winter so can you kind of see green on the bottom and the top probably looks like most people's grass right now who didn't feed and who have thatch so i intentionally stopped in my backyard last September when I fed and said, oh, well, let's see, I'm gonna stop here and see what this looks like versus what this looks like coming out of winter. This is just like a week ago and you can see the difference. The whole thing will get thatched, it always does at my house, but I can absolutely see the line where I stop tossing fertilizer out and it's like browny, yellowy straw color the entire side. The rest of it's a beautiful emerald green, just like the front yard is still, so I think Again, you can see the difference with that fertilizing in the fall, I think is a huge key, which we'll talk about in September. It's gonna mean less moss, healthier grass, and a little better looking turf coming out of winter. The last one's kind of the fun story. So I put the wars on at my house. This is last year. Can you guess what did that to my grass? Mr. Raccoon. Oh. So I've got three of them that are roaming through my neighborhood. I live right in the middle of Everett, kind of by Forest Park, the new Y's right there and kind of in our neighborhood. Um, and I've been out in the middle of the night trying to catch them. I, I, the war is on because, man, there was probably a month straight, like three or four times a week. It was just destroyed, tore up. And I, th I thought the same thing as the mole. Why is he here in my grass? Then I thought, you know what? I'm the organic guy. Nobody in my neighborhood has a lawn worth anything, to be honest with you. And I said, I got the fattest, juiciest earthworms you've ever seen in all of my soil. It's like, I'm not killing the earthworms to kill his food, but I'm gonna go out here and watch. So now I got a little chatter sprinkler. I got a sonic device. <coughs> I'm gonna knock on wood again. I haven't seen him since, since about late last summer. So we'll see if I, I'm, I'm off their, their uh, migration route finally, all right? So we all get it, that was an area I had to do exactly what we've been talking about today. So I went out, removed this. I'm not gonna take all those pieces and repack them and think they're gonna grow. That all got cleaned up. I put some topsoil in, re-leveled it, put the seed down, put the food down, did all the stuff we talked about. You couldn't even tell that happened here uh, coming out of winter in the same exact spot now in my place, okay? So there's a couple pictures hopefully kind of showed you, but, but uh, I'll say, before we get going here, so this is a great day if you're going to OCD out and try to go organic, especially for us. With all the classes 
um, we always have great discount for everybody who comes. So the smart gardeners I see today have like three bags of organic lawn food, their lime, everything on their cart because you're gonna get 20% off all of this today. So that seed, the compost is already on, buy four, get one free. If you want top coat, that's on 20% off. The lawn sprays, everything up on this table that has to do with the grass seed included is all 20%. So if you're gonna get some products here and kind of get going on this, just tell them at the register you were in the class today. Um, you weren't overcome by boredom, and I got my 20% off. There you go. Yeah, it, you know, we tried this because of the pandemic. We were always like live classes. I kind of like this size crowd. Pre pandemic, there were about 150 people packed in here on every Saturday. Then we went to Zoom, and now we kind of got both going. So we're not on Zoom. These are recorded. Wave to the camera. It'll be on YouTube. Um, here in a couple days, so you can always go back and watch it. So it starts today. You got through next Friday So you got about a week to come down and take advantage of the sale Is it under your name or what put it under my name? No, just just tell me about the class. I do most of the classes no, here on YouTube So we can look it up. Oh, if you look up Sunny, if you actually I should try if I put my name in there I bet you it comes up, but if you put in Sunnyside Nursery on YouTube, you're gonna see every video Too much of me in there because I do too many of these a year. So uh, the lawn one probably not today might be up late today, but for, shortly tomorrow if you want to check again. Now, the last thing I'll say is this. The weather's ideal. You know, you could start it this weekend. You could start it next weekend. You can wait a couple weeks. Try to get this done before we get warm. Because the one thing I hate doing is turning on the sprinkler early or having to go out water when you shouldn't have to. So do you got to go home and do all this today? No. If it was me, I would focus on moss weeds like I started at the beginning. If you've got those two issues, that's what I would go home and take care of today. Next weekend I'm home, sweet. Now I can thatch, rake. Maybe the next weekend I'm home, I can spend a few hours doing my seed, my food and all that, and then I'm golden, I'm heading to spring. So this isn't like a, I gotta wait three months to see the results. You saw my picture, one week, one month. Grass is a resilient creature. Anybody who watches Discovery Channel, like I do all the time, you see it get burnt, flooded, stomped, eat, whatever. It's gone, and then what happens? It grows back again. You know, we don't water our grass last summer. What happens? Rain comes, oop, here it comes again. You know, typically it comes back. So it's a resilient thing to do, but the water is the key, and if you're doing new with seed, it has to stay moist. So I, that's why I try, don't do this in the summer. Yes, it's more fun to go out in a tank top and the beer in hand when it's 75 degrees and do it, but if you can do it now, the rain's gonna keep it moist for you. It's gonna germinate better and you're gonna have much better luck. If you did this, you know, half this weekend, maybe next weekend you finish up. I mean, it could be a month, maybe six weeks. You're gonna look out and go, what have I done? I got brand new lawn. I mean, it looks like you literally started over again. If you've got decent soil and we thatch and do all this stuff, you're gonna really rejuvenate that turf area, okay?